in five, four, three. We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your host and relationship expert, Spicy Madi, and today in the G-Spot for a very tantalizing, fulfilling, and exciting show, we have the amazing, the beautiful, Kanita Bourne. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> I'm so excited to be back, so happy to have this amazing woman in the chair right now on the show. I'm gonna give you a little bit of background about her, what makes her so phenomenal. So. Kanita Bourne is a licensed clinical social worker with over 20 years of experience working with people. Kanita has always marched to the beat of her own drum and has mastered the art of being completely herself without apology. Because this is her reality over time, her passion has become aiding individuals live their life authentically and unapologetically. Throughout her career, Kanita has worked with a variety of populations including children, adolescents, transitional age youth, adults, families, and postpartum mothers. She has helped them overcome joy-threatening obstacles such as sexual and physical abuse, anxiety, trauma, divorce, negative reactions to teen pregnancy, sexual exploration, identity, depression, self-harm, bullying, school problems, relationship challenges, and psychosis, to name a few. Kanita lives by the motto, life is too short to be unhappy. She knows that achieving true joy is not always easy, but the journey is worth it. Kanita believes that therapy is often a full body experience. Mm. She's eclectic in her approach and believes that one of her superpowers is understanding what people need and meeting them where they are and they need to do the work. Okay, Kanita, amazing, phenomenal, G-spot profile as always. Listen, that makes me <laughs> sound so amazing. Right, don't you love hearing uh, oh my goodness, people speak oh your body? Like, Wait, yes, I forgot right. how dope I am. Right? <laughs> Well, on today's episode, we're super excited to have you because this is a part of your expertise mm -hmm. and uh, brought you in so that we can talk about how to forgive our parents for messing us up, oh. right? Because we both work with a lot of clients. We uh, even have friends, family, lovers that we come into contact with and you can see and feel energetically when someone has maybe some child trauma or some, you know, even unconscious things that are going mm -hmm. on, you know, with them and their relatives or you know that has like stayed over time some of it is even subconscious it never comes to life but that's what they have you for and today's episode we're going to talk about that but but first you have to bring some of your truth to the light and so you're going to give us a little bit of spicy self-passion intimacy communication and learning to say yes so you have to tell us when did you first fall in love with yourself um so that one is kind of easy i have always been in love with myself Ooh. you know i'm not gonna lie and say that it's always at the same level mm -hmm. i do have ebb and flows but i've just kind of always looked in the mirror and looked at myself and said kanita you're super dope and that's one thing my parents did well you know kind of reinforcing yeah. kanita you're smart you're awesome you can do anything you want and i just ran with that so i've kind of always been you in love believe with them i did right I and did. that's sometimes tough too when your parents try to tell you that or instill that in you and you decide not to believe them like yeah. you're gonna reject that in the truth yeah but that's you know it's part of why we have some of these challenges as we become adults but you're gonna help us through that now you have to tell us how did you discover your life's passion my life's passion i think my life's passion is still a work in progress um i love people i love people i love helping with and working with people i grew up in new york um, was so we're gonna hear that East Coast coming. You know, sometimes you know, <laughs> say things like coffee. It's like, oh, oh, she is Call. from New York, <laughs> right? Um, so I grew up in New York, and I I took the subway to school, and I constantly saw you know homeless people on the subway, and it just kind of um, it did something to me mm -hmm. physically. I'm like, you know, why are all of these people suffering? And my mom is very much a helper as well. So I grew up in the hospital too, in the hospital where she worked. Mm -hmm. And, and that just kind of drove me to want to help people. I didn't always know how I wanted to help them, but I knew I always yeah. wanted to help people, so. And you're helping people. And, and I'm helping people. <laughs> every day, every second. So, sometimes even when they don't want it. Right, I saw, I saw you on the phone earlier telling someone about themselves. Oh, uh, my, my sister. <laughs> Sisters didn't help, see? <laughs> okay, you have to give us the eye for intimacy. What is your biggest turn on? Oof. Come on. That's the question. Us, right? What yeah. is my biggest turn on? Um, my safe answer is I'm a sapiosexual. Mm. So any man that can get me thinking, I am dripping wet for Petty it. I'm mind. here for it all. Um, so that's my safe answer. My, I'm the um, one. You already know. Give me the spicy right? one. 
the spicy one. What is my biggest turn on? This is kind of safe too, but it's true. A man with like confidence, like almost that cocky kind of confidence who will see you across the room and just kind of walk up to you and just grab you. Up. Right? But I mean, not in a abusive way. <laughs> In a nice sexual, sexual way, way, right? So he has some finishes we're going to find out about later. <laughs> and then if he can dance too, oh lord. So you like the dancing, why do you like the dancing? You know, so I'm Caribbean. My mom is from Jamaica, my hey, dad is from Barbados. shout out to Jamaicans, my hubby. Listen, so if you <laughs> have that, you know, that, that wine in your waist, yes. oh my goodness, it's just very passionate. Because it makes you think about, you know, they say, I mean, can I curse on here? Yes. You know, because th there's a song that says, if you can dance, you can fuck. Mm -hmm. So that means you believe that. Hello, hi. <laughs> 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 Finally, we get the we get some of the nice. I'm just saying, it's 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 usually right on right on point. So if you can dance, I'll let you. Do you go. think that you can teach men to dance? Um, oof. If you get my drift. You can, <laughs> you, you can, but you have to, you have to be patient and you have to teach them in a way that they can receive it. Yes, that part. Um, and that's sometimes fun too. <laughs> see? <laughs> I love that we're already being open. <laughs> okay, now we have to go into C for communication. Mm. What is the best compliment that anyone has ever told you? The best compliment. Okay, so <laughs> the best compliment I've ever gotten was that my butt is getting bigger. Oh. <laughs> and you're like, thank you. Listen, I have the tiniest butt ever. No, your butt actually looks nice. I saw that earlier. What? Yes. yes. See, here it is. I'm here for it all. You've been doing the squats? What I've been, been doing, doing all of the things. I've been doing the weighted squats. I've been doing the, you know, when you, the kickback. The kicks, donkey I'm, kicks. I'm working. Like, my sister literally stole all, of, all the booty. Like, it's ridiculous. And I'm like, I can't have any of it. So when people tell me my butt is, Nice shape. Yes. I'm here for it. Oh no, it looks good. I saw it earlier. I was oh, like, oh, yeah. I didn't even know she had all that. I did. So look, you've been working hard and staying on. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Yes, I definitely <laughs> noticed. Okay, now you have to tell us uh, why, which is for yes and spicy. You got to share a time that you conquered a fear. When did you stop saying no, conquered a fear, and said yes? Oof, when did I conquer a fear? Oh, so I think I've spoken to you about this before, but I recently adjacent maybe at this point six months ago i did an underwater photo shoot mm -hmm. um and that is a huge huge fear um i'm terrified of water you know i i am a walking stereotype that black people don't swim <laughs> <laughs> because i do not swim but that also comes from trauma when i was about five my uncle drowned um maybe when i was eight my sister tried to teach me to swim mm. Came down a huge slide in like a eight foot pool, and she was off with her friends, so nobody was there to catch me. So trauma surrounded water. Oh no! Um, but I did an underwater photo shoot in a pool where I could not, like I was always you were in. submerged. I was underwater. absolutely submerged, and that was one of the best things that I've ever done because I I usually live my life fearlessly, mm -hmm. and this was one fear that I'm like, listen, I cannot continue to. To let this control me. Yeah. Um, so I did it. And the pictures are kind of cute. Too. You're like, and I kind of look amazing. Oh, yeah. I kind of. Water do. works for me. Right? <laughs> oh, water, water is a great compliment <laughs> to me. Okay, so you just explained to us how you conquered one of your fears, though, which is the perfect transition into <laughs> today's episode of Our Parents Jacked Us Up. Now, what? So you're going to give us a little bit of amazing and wonderful, beautiful advice on what we do when starts stuff we're gonna call it just stuff mm -hmm. starts to come up for us and we don't know or even aren't aware that maybe it's coming from our childhood and our parents mm -hmm. what do we do um short answer go to therapy <laughs> <laughs> spicy tip right there <laughs> that is the absolute short answer but the the longer answer is you have to do some digging right um, I think everybody at this point in life has seen the Titanic, mm -hmm. right? And the whole premise of the Titanic is they crashed into this um, seemingly small glacier yep. and the whole boat was ruined. But it's not the small glacier that was on top of the water that caused the accident. Right. It was this big, huge 
glacier under the water, the root of the problem, mm -hmm. right? So you have to truly dig down to the root of the problem. And the way you do that is you, you sit with your feelings, right? If, you're, if you continue to have these relationships where the same issues come up, yeah. you want to say to yourself, okay, when did this start? And if you start thinking about it, it'll go back to yeah. something that happened in your childhood. Um, but yes. people are uncomfortable with expressing their feelings, mm -hmm. right? What if you are dealing with a partner yes. that may not have the ability to articulate their emotions, not mm -hmm. even the capacity, and they may not have the highest level of emotional awareness okay. or intelligence. Within what do you do as a partner? Do we give up on them? Huh. Are you married? <laughs> <laughs> because I have trained my husband. Don't no, no worry about me. But because like, yeah, if, if, if they're dating someone, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you are seeing someone and you're like, oh, they're not introspective enough, or you know, they're not, uh, you know, communicating with me enough. Of you know, I don't feel the intimacy growing. Yeah. Do you give up on them, or do you believe that you can help the person? Okay, so that's a that's a loaded question. Um, Sometimes you need to give up on people. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that you can help the person? Absolutely. I think the way you do that is you have to be totally above board. That part. Yeah, you have to be extremely in tune with your emotions. You have to set firm boundaries and you have to tell people how to treat you. Right. And once you do all of those things, they're either going to follow suit, mm -hmm. they're going to figure it out, or they themselves are going to hasta la hala themselves in a right. relationship. Right? Absolutely. So it's like, okay, well, what, what's the problem? You know what? What I like is when my partner communicates with me in X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And I love to do, I feel blank when. You right. Know, that's a whole therapy too, right? <laughs> like, I feel neglected when you don't tell me what's going on with you kind of thing. And they can, you, they'll decide. Are they going to start sharing their feelings with you or not? Or they might even say, you know what? I'm uncomfortable with my feelings. I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Can you help me figure out how to get help with this? And that's somebody you can work with. But if this person is just like, I don't deal with feelings. Nobody has time for that. Yeah. You gotta go. You and gotta it, go. it does make a lot of people though uncomfortable to have to share, but it makes a lot of people uncomfortable to even initiate that, right? Because mm -hmm. we want everybody to come prepackaged equipped, ready to go, yeah. make us feel safe so that we can be vulnerable. However, one thing that I definitely try to, when I'm working with my clients, mm -hmm. is letting them know that they may have to lead in the vulnerability department. Yes. Someone may not be naturally just, everybody gets to be let in, you know, automatically feel safe. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, interactive experience yeah. and someone has to start. Yeah. Is they going to be you? <laughs> and, I mean, and, and it's true too. Someone has to start A number one and B number two. When people start too soon, that's also a red flag. Yes, that part. So speak to that. When people start, start too soon, when is it too soon Oof. to start being emotionally available or vulnerable and sharing? So every relationship is different. But if you've been talking, right? Do we still use those terms like, hey, I'm <laughs> I don't know, I'm old school. But We're talking. <laughs> yeah. All right. 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 If you're just talking to somebody, and you're also talking to a couple of different people, they're mm -hmm. talking to a couple of different people, you you kind of don't want this person to share all their intimate life issues and secrets with you because that's a little bit strange, right? You, you do want to get to know them just enough to say, maybe I can commit loosely <laughs> <laughs> to this person. But when they're just like, we met yesterday and, oh yeah, when I was a kid, my mom used to, Hold up a second, right? Unless it's relevant to maybe something that you saw or something that you're talking about in that exact moment. But if it's just arbitrary out of nowhere, oh yeah, my last girlfriend, she did. No, well, you're doing too much right now. I don't even know your middle name. That part. Right? Um, so how soon is too soon? I would say I'm, I'm older. I'm older, so I don't have time to waste time. So this is a time thing? Um... It's not necessarily a time thing as much as it is an intention thing. There you right? go. Intention. What is your intention with this person? What is your intention with this person? And I tell, I, I, I don't necessarily want to say I train people up front, but I do. I'm very transparent. It's like, okay, well, 
what am I doing with you? I'm, am I just having fun with you over here? Or am I trying to see if we can have something real? And if I'm trying to see if we can have something real, I'm very clear, okay, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, this is what I expect, this is what I don't expect. You do it with that, whatever you want to do with it. And don't you find that it's easier for them to deliver on their capacity or if they're, if they're capable, if they know what the expectations are and you set those parameters early on okay. versus like creating invisible lines mm -hmm. and they potentially like fall over it and cross it. Yeah. <laughs> because if they, I mean, if they don't know, how will you know? Right. Right. Um, and and we, we expect that people read our, we think everybody is psychic. Why? <laughs> Why do we think that? I don't Why know. do we think that they just know that they should be doing this or behaving this way to satisfy our needs? It's, you know, I, I think a, most of us are have a little bit of narcissism and they truly, and we truly believe, I don't want to say that because sometimes I do it even with my advanced education and degree in, in relationships and in people but sometimes we just think everybody thinks like us mm -hmm. right because the way we think is right obviously or we wouldn't think that way right <laughs> <laughs> it must be it must be <laughs> right but but it actually is really de debilitating to think that everybody thinks like us if you tell people hey this is what I think this is what I feel they get to turn around and say, oh, shoot, because I was thinking and I was feeling this. Right. And maybe they might teach you something. Right. But you have to, I have to be very clear up front and say, listen, I don't, I'm not sure how you usually handle a situation, but this is what I like to do. And it works. Question. Yes. Because this is an episode about parenting mm. and how we heal from some of those things that we may not have gotten or we're not aware of happened to us when in our adolescence mm -hmm. what or how can you start to learn that skill set though outside of therapy right mm -hmm. if your parents did not teach you how to have effective communication and express yourself when you were younger because we usually grow up in households yeah. that are like children should be seen and not heard yeah. or you know you're going to eat whatever i feed you yeah. Versus, you know, what would you like? How does this make you feel? Mm -hmm. What do you think about this punishment? Do you think that it's wrongful that, you know, I'm deciding to send you to your room? What would you prefer instead? Those conversations usually aren't happening. Yeah. So then as an adult now, we're expected to be in a relationship with someone and be able to articulate mm -hmm. what we mean, what we feel, what we want. How do we grow that skill set if it's not, if it wasn't given to us in our childhood? Absolutely. First of all, this is 2020, right? There are books. Books. There are podcasts. Podcasts. Hello, it's my <laughs> Right? <There> are, <laughs> seriously, right? Like, there are people out there who we just have conversations with. And truth be told, everybody has relationships. You might not have a romantic relationship that you're proud of at this time, mm -hmm. but you have a relationship. Maybe you have a relationship with a platonic friend or maybe with a boss. But you learn these things in these relationships. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay attention that, to that as well because some of those skills are transferable. Yep, exactly. But, um, Agree wholeheartedly with that. And I, I love I love when I talk to people about reading books. Crucial Conversations is actually one of my favorites. Um, and you just talked about conversations. That is a book that actually trains people how to have <laughs> crucial conversations. Crucial conversations. Right, you know, it's right in the in the title of the book. I love when people say, Oh, I don't read. I just had a client tell me that. I'm like, okay, I so I'm going to send you the Audible. Well, but first of all, I mean, number one, <laughs> we can get around that, but you're getting this information. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I, I cannot fathom people who don't want to absorb information. Absorb information because it's all there, right? Um, the, another really, really good book, um, The Game of Desire. Mm. Oh my goodness. Like, when I read this book, this girl, she. Honestly, Lord, I don't I can't believe I'm gonna say this right now. Go ahead, say it. If you out. read this book and you're looking to, to change yourself, mm -hmm. you probably don't even need to go to therapy if you actually Wow, follow. that's an amazing compliment. It's so true because she talks about attachment styles. She talks about um, love languages. Yes. She talks about all of these things that if you have a good therapist, they're going to go through all right. of these things with you. And not only does she talk about it, she gives you workbooks. Right. Yes, shout out to, because we actually had uh, Shan in the studio. Did you? Yes. <laughs> so shout out to Shan because she did an amazing job of like uh, getting majority of like the, oh the, the assessments yes. that, you know, we learn in therapy and mm -hmm. that we, you know, teach our clients and put them in one and she broke it down in a way that was easy to digest 
and how you can figure out these things, you know, your love language and like All these the things best. quickly. Yes. She, like that, that book, everything. <laughs> but the person doesn't read. They may not get the book. Then what do they do? So again, you listen to a podcast, you listen to the audible, but oof, the, again, as a therapist, this sounds horrible to say. You might be a lost cause. <laughs> Okay, so if, so if you're not reading, if you're not listening to podcasts, if you're not going to therapy or hiring a coach, if you aren't practicing consistently healthy and effective communication with lovers, your boss, friends, family, then Camille is telling us that you're hopeless because I, I am, and it sounds because there's too many ways out there to practice, too much information to absorb and get. So why are you in a deficit? Why are you, you know? Unable all, to articulate yourself. All that translates to is you are married to who you are in this moment. And stuck in your ways. And you are not interested in change. And without change, nobody becomes better. Yeah. Right? You actually become worse because everybody around you is becoming better and you are stagnant. Oh my gosh. Yes. In 2020, if you aren't working on self-growth, mm -hmm. and that is one of the questions that actually ask you know my make sure that my clients have learned to ask the person who i sit on a date with is mm -hmm. what do you do for self-growth yeah. because if they're like well i don't read i don't listen to audio i don't even meditate i don't do i just go to work mm -hmm. so you're gonna be here yes <laughs> right in five years in 20 years you're gonna be in the same space and everybody is gonna surpass you and you're gonna be looking around like where did everybody go you're gonna be behind the curve all the, all the way behind <laughs> And to, especially when it comes to love and having healthy relationships, mm -hmm. we date our, our level of consciousness. We yes. love at our level of consciousness. So if you are at a low capacity and aren't able to comprehend necessarily, you know, and elevate yourself, you are going to have to date only what you can attract, yeah. only what is willing to work with you. Because the higher, you know, EQ, mm -hmm. they're not going to want to be with somebody who has a lower EQ. That's just the way that it is. And so you're either going to be unhappy and alone. <laughs> We're trying to encourage you guys to like really get the help. <laughs> Cause I don't think we take that seriously enough it's sometimes. Simple. And it, I mean, and it could be as simple as asking a friend, Hey, you've been a lot around for my last couple relationships. What do you think I could have done differently? That is such a simple question. An easy question. But you have to be able to receive the information that people give you back. And some, sometimes we don't want to receive it because we want to say, oh, no. We're not comfortable with that. Right? I want, it was, it was the, the girl or the guy or the whoever I was with that they were the problem. No, again, not true because we all have a part to play yeah. in, in all relationships that go wrong. We do. And you have to take accountability for that. You have to. And learn, learn. If every relationship may not necessarily have been... Uh, a mistake or something that you should even regret every relationship whether it's toxic or healthy you have to be able to look at it and say what did I learn from this and how am I going to become a better person yes. what different choices am I going to make in the next relationship what different behaviors am I going to demonstrate mm -hmm. what am I going to do for myself in the process before the next relationship to yeah. make sure I'm prepared for the relationship that I do want mm -hmm. they're going to listen to the spicy life podcast and go to Kamita for <laughs> help <laughs> Okay, give me some of the signs when you're dating someone, though, that we should be looking out for when they have mommy or daddy issues. Oof. What um, are some of the telltale red flags? Telltale red flags. When people say, well, that's how I always have done it. Um, when, usually this is men, but it, it can be women sometimes, when they have this, like, how do I say it? Um, they are, again, married to gender roles. Mm married to gender roles like specifically well you need to come cook you need to make sure you cook for me or you need to do the dishes what do you mean you're going out with friends like that's a little bit of indicative of mommy daddy issues um when men usually mm -hmm. again cannot have healthy relationships with other men mm -hmm. indicative a lot of the times of daddy issues um when people cannot have relationships with females healthy relationships with mm. females i even mean platonic indicative of mommy issues oh wow i actually encourage 
when people tell me like, oh, I don't let my man have male friends. When they tell me that, I mean, um, female friends. Like, mm -hmm. I won't let them be friends with the opposite sex. Yeah. I'm I, like, I but they should be that. able to have healthy platonic relationships mm -hmm. with the opposite sex without having to have sex with them. Yeah. There's a problem if he can't be friends with someone yes. without having sex with them. <laughs> so usually when women say that or it could be men if they're if they're in a relationship with a man when people say that i don't allow my partner if they're a man to have female friends that's usually an indicative of you have issues mm -hmm. thank you that part <laughs> it's internal right <laughs> because you truly believe that people are out here just sleeping with everybody mm -hmm. and sometimes people just are friends like and that's okay <laughs> Every and just because I have a male friend don't even mean I'm attracted to that person in my way. I do think that the yes that we should make it clear that the attraction isn't there. <laughs> like make your partner feel secure. Mm -hmm. But also too, if the person's not bringing them around you, if that is a true friend, mm -hmm. they should be allowed in your space. Yes. If that is someone's friend, you should be inviting them out. Mm -hmm. You know, holding things. It should be a mutual friend, right? Mm -hmm. You may not like every single person that your partner yeah. brings around. But whether it's a man or a woman or vice versa, um, you should make an effort to meet their friends. And oh, they should absolutely. make an effort to introduce you. Yeah. Well, and, and kind of early, again, I'm, I'm older, I want to know who you're spending the most of your Thank time. Thank you. Who is influencing you? Right? Because what do they say? The, the, people, the five people that we spend the, the majority of our time with are a reflection of who we are as people. Mm -hmm. So you maybe you have become very good over the years masking who you are mm. right so i meet you i'm like oh this guy is amazing <laughs> right? i'm ready right yeah. but then i meet your five best friends and i said okay so henry over here is cheating on his wife billy over here hasn't worked in 12 years you know and then the other three i don't know how great are you question then since you just brought up a hot button because there's a lot of people who are listening to this and mm -hmm. they're going to be like hmm my boyfriend or the guy I'm dating hangs out with someone who is going through a divorce or who did cheat mm -hmm. or vice versa, you know, my girl has someone who, you know, whose, whose friend, you know, is hoeing around. Yeah. Should we be judging our partner on that though? Because it's a, it's a fine line between mm -hmm. your friends being a reflection of you mm -hmm. and at the same time us being loyal based off of time or, you know, having like mm -hmm. these close relationships and we don't want to abandon them because they're a part of our identity. Oof. Oh, okay. Well, how do I want to answer this? Um, no, I don't think we should judge people based on this. How? Because people make mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And just because someone is getting a divorce doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Mm -hmm. Just because someone has cheated doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is someone who every chance they get, they're sleeping away whoever is a <laughs> right because that's that's very different from right. a person who's had a slip up mm -hmm. that's also very different from somebody who is in maybe an open relationship right maybe that's not something that you might be comfortable with but if them and their partner have an understanding yeah hey why not you like it i love it but if you are surrounding yourself with with people who are just like inherently Dishonest. Dishonest. <laughs> inherently stagnant. This is what I'm talking what, about. What about them are you attracted to? What about right. them are you attracted I agree to? And, and I'm so them. sorry. I'm very loyal. However, just because we've been friends for 25 years does not mean we need to continue to be friends at the level that you are one of my type, top five people. Mm -hmm. Because again, I truly agree. Uh, and may, I'm married to the law of attraction. I'm married to whatever you surround yourself right. with. It, 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 it permeates you as a person. So why do I want to surround myself with somebody who's constantly dishonest? I'm, I'm going to become dishonest. I am. That part. Because someone's personality is going to be more influential. You don't want to be the person who winds up losing that fight. No, <laughs> Especially if they're dishonest. Like that is going to, you know, because it's easier to be bad than it is to be good. It, it, oh, <laughs> hell it is so easy to be bad. I try hard to be good. Oh my God, so, no good is work. Right? Like is. having morals is work. It I'm is like, damn, so why did I have to be a child of God? <laughs> do you know? Do you know what I would be getting myself into if I wasn't? Oh, I, I say that about six times a day. I'm serious. It's only because of God that I am 
as moral as I am. Right. Because some of some of the things I think about wanting to do, I'm like, <laughs> Lord help us all. Cause. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, she's, we're gonna take you out of Sorry. that imagination right now. Whoever you were just bring, saying, bring like, that. we're gonna bring, we gonna bring her right back really quick. But okay, really quick, mm -hmm. how do we forgive someone who hasn't asked for forgiveness? You just do it because forgiveness is about you. It's not about anybody else. What about when it's with our parents, though? We want to heal the relationship with our parents because we know that they're a part of why we're having struggles mm -hmm. dating in relationships. But mommy and daddy aren't trying to hear us or men because they are stuck in their ways mm -hmm. and they think they did either a great job or don't want to acknowledge the shame of what it would look like if yeah. they didn't do a great job. Mm -hmm. How do we forgive and heal that relationship anyways? So, well, first of all, again, I think it goes back to you doing the work because if you don't change, if we don't change individually, nothing around us changes. So we do the work so we can change, so that we can be an example of what a healthy relationship, yeah. healthy communication looks like. And then we start utilizing those skills. Mm -hmm. And we utilize them with our parents. Our parents aren't going to look around like, ooh, Kenita, you didn't always talk like this. You didn't always do this. You don't start with the, hey, let me tell you how you messed me up. <laughs> nobody, let me tell you what you've been doing. Man, nobody <laughs> is going to be responsive to that at all. It's like, wait, excuse me? I also am a firm believer that people do the best that they can. Yep. And when I say that people struggle with it, well, my mom beat me. Well, my dad did this. My dad sexually abused me. I am still a firm believer that people do the best that they can with what they have. Mm -hmm. Right? So if your mom beat you, your dad sexually abused you, your dad was emotionally avail unavailable, your mom, whatever what did their life look like mm -hmm. growing up Pe people who usually do what they know and they are usually just a little bit better than how they had it yeah so could you imagine i mean that's the goal at least like to do better than your parents yeah but and, and uh, most of the time that's what happens mm -hmm. so if your parent was really that horrible imagine what their situation was like growing up right right and i think when you when you're able to develop a little bit of that empathy yeah Right, like if they did this to me, man, I feel sorry for whatever happened to them to get them to this place. And I and and sometimes it, it's a conversation, and you just have to say thank you to the parents. Thank you for doing the best that you could with me. Um, I appreciate that you tried. Um, now that I've learned something, <laughs> right? How how do you feel about? me teaching you some of the things that I've learned. That sounds a lot better than when I was growing up, you were. Yeah, you jacked me up. You an a-hole. No, that doesn't. It sounds like you are, you know, of course, giving the like affirmation or compliments first, mm -hmm. and then like in a nice, kind way, packing on there, like, can we work through this together? Yeah. Yeah, that, that actually is a great method in communication mm -hmm. so that that way they don't feel as if you're like instantly going in on them. Because parents mm -hmm. get defensive, right? Oh, yes. My mom said to me a few years ago, I said something to her. I'm, I'm a, I love my mom. She's so cool. Like, I hope you love your mom. Well, I mean, <laughs> so let me say this. Shout out to Kenita's mama. I not only love my mom, but I actually like her too. And I think that that's very important. That is extremely um, important. Because we can love people and not like them one iota. But I love my mom and I like my mom. But I said something to her a few years ago. Don't ask me what it was. I have no idea. And she said, that hurt my feelings. Hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> and it never dawned on me that my mother had feelings. <laughs> right? And I know that sounds insane. <laughs> You're like, the way you tear into me is yeah. you want to have a heart? <laughs> well, I mean, because parents are just parents, right? right? They're, they're the people who take care of us. They, they, this is their job to do these things. But it never truly dawned on me that, the, and I was an adult at this time, right? That the things that I do, the things that I say, could possibly hurt this person's feelings, this person that I care about. So I, I'm very introspective. So I, I did some digging back into my life. Like, what else have I done in my life yeah. to hurt this person's feelings? What else have I done in my life that made this individual reactive, which maybe contributed to some issues that we've had? Mm -hmm. Which goes it's back to my, sta my statement of we contribute to whatever negative relationship we have. We might not be aware because maybe we're too young to be aware or we're just super oblivious. But when we start thinking about it, 
what did I contribute? How did I contribute to this negative relationship? Yeah. Um, I don't even remember what you asked me. <laughs> Started with the forgiveness of parents, but yeah. everything that you're giving is like amazing tools that we can be using to mm -hmm. heal that relationship and just have a more effective communication with our parents. When you are dating someone or you're interested in someone, mm -hmm. should we be? Because you mentioned earlier, like moving too fast or you know being too vulnerable too mm -hmm. soon. But before we decide to even emotionally commit to someone, should we be kind of asking to meet the parents and kind of see what you're a product for? <laughs> Don't you think it'll give a little insight it'll, into what you're signing up for? It'll give a lot of insight, dear God. So my mom, my parents, my parents didn't meet. Well, my dad has, I don't think he's ever met my mother's mother. Right? Yeah. My paternal grandmother lived with us for a little bit when I was growing up. Hopefully my parents never hear this. My <laughs> hopefully my dad. My, um, my mother has said a number of different times, if I met your dad's family before we got married, I would have never married him. Mm. And that is so powerful to me because she would have known what she was signing she up for. She would have known what she was signing up for. And he is truly a reflection of his family of origin. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna get too much into that, but, <laughs> but truly, this really is therapy with the right now. Hey, so how does that make you feel? Listen, <laughs> it, it, you know what? It actually makes me very conscious, very aware of mm -hmm. the type of men that I date, because, yeah, um, <laughs> we're gonna leave that right there. But I do, I do think that you should meet people's parents and and I know people get a little yeah. weirded out. They want to act like that's like high level, yeah, and but it's. I'm desensitized from it. Like before my husband, every single ho, schmo, every single, I brought everybody to my mom. Mm -hmm. Like that, but I didn't hold that on a pedestal yeah. because mom was part of the screening process also. Yeah. And so I'm like, if you can't handle her, then like, what are we doing? You're definitely not gonna be able to handle me because I'm the, you're her child. So <laughs> like imagine her 2.0 and like, uh, you know, on right. at a whole other level when it comes to like capability. But I, I think it's because of historically how people have dated, right? Because people are what we want to call hoeing around or they're laughing, joking, playing with people's emotions. They don't want to be, bring people around their parents because then this means it's serious. Mm -hmm. But if you just make it like a, a random Sunday barbecue right? and that's what we do, oh, hey, I'm go, about to go hang out with my family. Just come through. It doesn't have to be a thing, right? Nobody is sitting here asking you, well, what are your intentions with my daughter? Right. And if, and if they are asking, they're asking in a way that... first date? No. <laughs> Listen, what movie was that? There was some movie I watched recently when this guy brought the woman around his parents for the first date, and I said, you know what? I'm here for it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm no. like, bring it on. But, I mean, and sometimes it's not even about the person that you're dating. It's about your embarrassment of your of your family like mm -hmm. you don't want people to know what's going on in, in your situation. right because if they so saw insight into that they may think twice about you but to me you need to know you person. absolutely do but we hold it on such a traditional mm -hmm. pedestal that and, and sometimes you're even dating someone where you don't know if what their parents mean to them mm -hmm. means the same thing as you mm -hmm. even when it comes to like so the meaning portion right yeah. I have heard people before and have even had clients that express me, I can't believe it didn't work out. Like, I thought we were gonna be together forever, we're so close, and he introduced me to his parents. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the guy was yeah. like, and she introduced me to her mom. It must mean something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, does it mean something to them? Like, did they tell you that it meant something? Or is that your assessment or yeah. interpretation? Because if they didn't tell you that it meant something, that's, this yeah. is a thought that you're having on your own. Your own we don't know who she had over there last week. We love to, we love to add value to things, right? Right. We absolutely love to add value. Again, narcissism because this is important to me. It has to be important. Must be important to, to you, mm -hmm. rather than just being um, what we in therapy like to be to call being curious about something, mm -hmm. right? You can curiously say, "Oh, hey, you want me to meet your mom? What's that about?" And let them tell you, "Oh, nothing." Every whole Joe Schmo, right? Like to, okay, cool. Then you know it's nothing. Or if they're like, oh yeah, you know, I really think I want to ask you to marry me tomorrow. <laughs> um, then you get to be like, oh, wait, this is the first date, right? <laughs> <laughs> you 
know, but you but you ask questions like, what does this mean? What do we? What what is hey, hanging out with your mom mean? What does meeting your friends mean? Right? Oh, you don't what want does to be, it, yes. What meeting your friends. Mean? What does that mean? Even what does inviting me to a wedding mean? What does that like, mean? Because some people will interpret that as oh. Yeah, we're, we're so much we're more serious, sick. and really, they just needed a date. Cause Hello, and you're fun, <laughs> and you're fun. Like that's because you're fun. The other person, uh, they couldn't. They had to work. No, <laughs> you were my third choice. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna dive a little bit deeper in the parent conversation. Yes. You, I, I want you to elaborate on. I know what it means, or that we should be having the communication mm -hmm. about what the parent means. You know, when you meet them. But talk to me about how your parent, without you even knowing, influences your decision when it comes to choosing a partner. So, oof, years ago, I probably was 19 at the time. I read this book. I don't know what it was called, but <laughs> I have no idea. Love that book. Um, right? <laughs> um, but it talks about the radio station that we're tuned to. Mm -hmm. and Love this already. And, and they explain that we only attract people that are tuned to the same radio station. Correct. That's absolutely true. And we are typically tuned to the radio station because of the input that we receive. Yep. Right? And we receive this input because of our, our family of origin. And it goes back to the the, to the glacier. Things are deep-rooted. And deep. whatever is in the room in is going to come up. You don't even know about Man. It. Yeah. Right? It comes out to the surface. And you're like, oh, I'm an iceberg? Mm -hmm. How did I become an iceberg? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your roots are iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> right? So when you, when you have these communication issues, or even the way you love people, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is why I absolutely love the five love languages. Yes. Because sometimes we don't even understand why I'm, why I'm so touchy. Right. Right? But if we, again, yeah. sit back and think, oh, my parent touched me they were extremely time. affectionate yeah right or why am i uncomfortable with gifts maybe every time you got a gift was right before your dad sexually abused you right but again yeah. you have to really sit back and say okay what does this mean to me and where does this come from but yeah. but you have to be curious about your curious enough about yourself to ask these questions um so so, so everything there are so many things that are subconscious. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like journaling because when people journal, they get to see their patterns, mm -hmm. right? So I had a, this relationship, it didn't work out. I had this other relationship, it didn't work out. And again, it doesn't have to be romantic. It could just be platonic, mm -hmm. right? But you have all these platonic friends leaving you or all these platonic friends saying, you know, I don't know if we can be friends anymore because I'm always reaching out to you. Yeah. You're not even... Reciprocating, mm -hmm. right? Um, you want to be journaling. You want to figure out, okay, well, why am I not reaching out to people? Why am I not? Where does that come from? Where does yeah, that yeah. come from? You'll figure it out yeah. if you do the work, but you have to be curious enough about yourself to do the work as opposed to be, being this person that's, well, that's just how I am. And if you want to make better choices in a partner mm -hmm. than your parents did, because mm -hmm. earlier you mentioned like, Mom may have not, you know, ended up with dad. She met the family. I oftentimes will tell my clients, like, you didn't get to choose your parents. Yep. Would you have actually chose that father for your mother? And you had to say in it, right? So <laughs> you didn't get to pick their partner. They don't get to pick yours. It is really your responsibility. You have to be held accountable for it. And I love what you said about the channel um, analogy because that speaks to uh, something that I do with my clients, which is uh, graphing their relationship frequency. Mm. And the frequency is what you're talking about from an energetic standpoint. Their vibration that they're on mm. is attracting that particular person yeah. because they have a pattern and a history within their family yeah. of this is what relationships look like. This is how my mother was in yeah. relationships. This is how my father responded to relationships. This is what the relationship was with me yes. or you know, family, friends, all of that. You can look at their history and actually see, oh, this is why you're vibrating at this pace. Absolutely. Got it, no wonder you chose that partner. And so, so for me, historically, I've been a magnet for unavailable men. Mm. So where does the unavailable come from? My dad is emotionally unavailable. He's mm. there, he's always been there. I grew up with him in the house, but it's like a void, mm -hmm. right? We'll laugh and joke, but, Hey, daddy. Uh, that's another. Like, he was 
physically there, but he was not emotionally. He there. was not emotionally there. So then, next question is: If father's not emotionally mm -hmm. available, and you start dating, where do you learn to create emotional intimacy with men from? So, luckily, I have had emotional intimacy with men because I have amazing male friends. Friends, great. Okay. Oh my goodness. So I know how to do why it. Why we need friends? This is why Don't we need friends, <laughs> right? And I, I just realized um, recently that life kind of set this up for me, right? Um, my elementary school, well, elementary for me was first to eighth grade. There were 23 maybe people in our class and there were only six females. The rest were males. Oh, wow. So early. It was popping. Hello. was this at? <laughs> <laughs> but early on, I was able to develop friendships with male people, mm -hmm. um, which taught me to just kind of let them in. I'm not gonna lie and say that I didn't struggle <laughs> when I dated, you know, because I, I did really good with my male friendships. Yeah. But as soon as something switched to romance, yeah, I became my mom. Mm -hmm. I became my mom, and then I realized, oh my goodness, this person that I chose out of all the other people who were interested in me is emotionally unavailable because wow. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I don't want it. But it's super comfortable with me, for me, and I haven't done the work to be at a place where I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. So I had to do the work to get uncomfortable. I had to do the work to say, okay, well, I know I don't want to tell no man where I'm going or what I'm doing or blah blah blah. You know, I gotta roll my head. <laughs> the head. <laughs> couple times. Couple times. Right? Because <laughs> that's that's the. That's what I got growing up, right? It's a, it's a learned behavior. It's a learned You're mirroring the relationship that your mother created with your father or that your father created with your mother. Absolutely. And we forget that. We well, Sometimes we don't even look at, am I choosing a partner or even dating in the way that my parents did? Or am mm -hmm. I even avoiding certain people because of my parents? Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> so I was subconsciously <laughs> choosing these people who pretty much mirrored my dad mm -hmm. um but but the good thing about my mom when um my my relationship in undergrad i came home from school i went to school in massachusetts i lived in new york she was like new york <laughs> actually my sister too was like i don't think he's for you he's very passive um and you become angry and domineering when you're around this person. Mm. But of course, you don't know what you're talking about. I love him. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right? Because you want to get defensive. You got to get defensive before you get out <laughs> and really look at what's going on. Um, but I realized when I'm around these type of men, mm -hmm. I don't like myself. Good point right there. Because that's a question that I want the audience to like, listeners, you guys need to reflect on that question. Do you like who you are when you were with the partner or the person that you are dating? Mm -hmm. And I didn't like myself when I was with him. I became, oh my God, I'm not even gonna get into what I became, but it was horrible. And we're- we It are, sounds like you became an asshole. I became an asshole. I became controlling. Mm. I became extremely manipulative. Wow. Oh my goodness, it was disgusting. And he and I are actually really cool now. Um, <laughs> Shout out to forgiveness. Right? He was like, <laughs> oh, you are a hot mess. <laughs> but, um, but I had to, I had to get comfortable enough to say, Kanita, I don't like who you are when you're this person, mm -hmm. right? I understand why you're this way, right? You're this way because of what you received growing up, but do you have to stay this way? Right. And I didn't have to stay that way. Right, my my relationship with men, I became very intentional about not having the same relationship with men that I had with my dad. Mm -hmm. Right, and when I found somebody being emotionally unavailable, hey, let's have a conversation. Right, this is what you're giving me. This is this is what I need for us to continue to have a relationship. This is what I need for us to continue to work. And if they don't give it to me, okay, well, that was fun. This is not it. But what I'm hearing is that you are communicating needs oh, yes. to break the pattern of what you were doing when you were dating yes. this certain type, this emotionally yeah. unavailable man. I'm communicating needs 
I'm, I'm setting clear boundaries, clear, clear boundaries. And I'm, um, I'm not making excuses, right? Because excuses are a thing. Oh, but I really like him. Right. Oh, maybe he's having a bad day. Oh, maybe he's having a bad week. Oh, maybe it's a bad month. <laughs> Maybe it's a bad two months and right? It's a bad day. <laughs> it can't be a bad day, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I stopped, I stopped making those type of excuses because it's like you have, you have to be, you have to look at your future. Mm -hmm. When I look at my life in the future, what do I want it to look like? And sometimes we don't know what we want it to look like. We know what we don't want it to look right. like, and then we can start building from there. Right, so whatever our parents had, I don't want that. Okay, starting point. How do I build maybe the opposite of that? And you go from there, right? And and to me, it's about um, breaking generational patterns as well. Yes, the Bible will call it curses. Yes. But it's real. But it's real. <laughs> but in our community, we call it generational patterns. It really is real. <laughs> like my, I have three nephews, and I'm like, and three boys three black boys that my sister and her husband are raising. And I tell them as much as they will listen, you will have to make sure that your relationship, your communication mm -hmm. is on the up and up because whatever you do is gonna teach them how to love. Yeah, It's gonna teach them how to love other people. It's gonna teach them how to love themselves. You know, you are, you have this responsibility. And they're like, Kanita, you're such a therapist. Yep. <laughs> aren't they blessed? Right? They got lucky. Like, you then this is free of charge. Hello. <laughs> Like, I try to get them to pay me, okay. but they delete my invoices. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I love your family already. <laughs> Whatever man inherits this family. <laughs> oh, they're lunatics, That's but they're That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> they really are. But I'm like, it's it's serious because there's no reason for us to continue to perpetuate this world where we have emotionally unavailable black men. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. and men in general, honestly, but I think in black men black for women. sure have learned, one, not to be in tune with their emotions, to just kind of be passive in certain areas and then super aggressive in others. Right. And it's like, that's so unnecessary. We're going to do a whole episode on, and I'm going to bring you back in for this one, um, the emotionally unavailable man mm -hmm. and the emotionally unavailable woman. Because mm -hmm. we forget that us as women are emotionally unavailable oh, yeah. too and wonder why he's not falling in love with us. Yes. And we're like, oh, but I'm... I'm, I'm open, willing, and ready, and really, you're not. But you're not. <laughs> Some of us women are not vulnerable like we yeah. should be and operating from fear, mm -hmm. and men are not even conscious of the fact that they may not even know how to, they may not even know how to articulate their emotions, mm -hmm. and that not be a pattern or behavior that they learned mm -hmm. growing up. So I'm gonna bring it in for a whole episode oh, around that, because we gotta break some of those barriers down to. too. We have to. We're gonna have to have more communication around that, like, like seriously, we it should not. That should actually be a part of our date. Like, are you emotionally available? Yeah. <laughs> and the crazy part is, people don't even know what that means. I know, I know. They're like, yeah, I'm here. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but emotionally, <Yeah. laughs> can can you comprehend? I mean, I, I can tell you if I'm sad, but can you? And I want us to do, like, I want us in that episode, you guys, I promise you I'm going to bring this to you, give you a vocabulary around emotions. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a list of, like, 2,000 emotions, and that way we, our go-to just won't be anger, hurt, mm -hmm. disappointment, and fear. Like, I feel like those are the only ones that we really lean into versus mm -hmm. a million other expressive ones that can really showcase, you know, that mm -hmm. there's many facets to you. But this is how you bring them out of your partner. This is how you express them, yes. and this is how they can express them to you. Have you ever asked a person how they feel? All the time. And then they come back with, well, I think, um... I said, feel. Man. Oh my God, you want to believe? Like, they will walk you through the experience. Yes. And incidents from an analytical standpoint. Yes. But not the emotional points. Yes. And that is something that is, that has to be taught. It is so powerful. I'm like, no, well, let's rewind that because I didn't ask you what you think. I, I didn't ask you for the, the play by play, the details. How did you feel? Mm -hmm. And then I, I, sometimes I get, well, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Um, I mean, emotions? <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I think those that vocabulary is really important, right? Because it's it's equivalent to somebody speaking to you in Spanish, and you're like, "Yes, and you speak Chinese, and it's yeah, we different. can't, mm -hmm. we cannot speak because we don't have the language." Yeah, 
And that usually is what it is. So basically we need to write like a second variation of the five love, love languages, mm -hmm. like the emotional languages or okay. something <laughs> for, for them. <laughs> Okay, Kenita, I know that we have been blessed with your presence. We are going to have to bring you back in for these amazing, like, episodes and information that you have to share. I love you to death. You're going to have to wrap up right now with us and give us the naked truth. Mm -hmm. If you could body swap with anyone for the day, who would you be body swapping with? If I could body swap with anybody for the day, huh, Lisa Bonet. Ooh, that's a good one. Dang, my sister's going crazy over there because that is like her idol. She oh, loves Lisa Bonet. <laughs> so, in the spirit of full transparency, her husband is everything. So you get the perks of sleeping with her man. <laughs> I, need, I need to sleep with this man. <laughs> and you get a whole pass because you're Lisa Bonet. Right, and then Lisa Bonet is Lisa Bonet, right? So then you just hit on my second question of if you had to let a body on top of you. <laughs> Though. Oh wait, because he's really big. Ooh, okay. I might have to be on top okay. Of him. Let me find out. You are a freak over here. Hey, right? hi. Fellas, if you're listening, <laughs> email me at info at the spicy life for Kanita's info. I'm I able am, to set this up. I am <laughs> <laughs> okay, but would he be your go to? Like, if you could just have a hall pass and mess with any man for the day, is that your celebrity crush you crush? He is. I have a couple of celebrity crushes, but he's. His name is Jason Momoa? Yes. yes. Oh okay. my god, he's so delicious. He is everything my goodness everything and my sister had told me a backstory about him that he wasn't like on and popping when lisa found him mm -hmm. and then like but she was just loving on him and yes. he was loving on her and then he like blew while they were yeah. together but isn't that what love does it makes you a, a real love makes that's you that's what a purpose mates when you start to walk into your purpose with your partner yes, yes. purpose mates hello Listen. but you you have to be comfortable with who you are mm -hmm. and not be intimidated, especially by a woman who has or is a little bit more than you at that time. Right. That, that shows a level, level of vulnerability on his part. Makes me want to look his chest even more. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take turns? Can we take turns? <laughs> yes. That's okay. I'm fine with it. You know. Okay. And now you're just, as the last one, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Like, you have to give me like a DC Marvel comic book Ooh. superpower. Oh. Um... I think I would I would have telekinesis. 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 I want to know what people are thinking and I also want to control them. <laughs> <laughs> I want people The to fire do. department is coming for you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you already look like this You are just too hot. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> they can go. But no, absolutely. So what I hear is that you want to read Jason Momoa's mind yes. and manipulate him to be under you. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you, Kanita, so much for coming Thank on. You. you are phenomenal. Uh, brilliant, brilliant mind. We have to have you back in the studio. Yes. Let everybody know where they can find you. So you can currently find me on Instagram. I am, what am I right now? Kanita Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> and that's born like the movies. Like Jason. B-O-U-R-N-E on Instagram, Kanita. And I am Spicy Mari. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Also, click subscribe, download this episode, share it with someone who needs to be blessed with this information. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spice.